Hola, ¿cómo estás? Soy Profe Cronister, and this lesson is about the verb estar, which means to be. But if you're a beginner, it's better to think of it as meaning to be feeling or to be located, since there's another verb, ser, that can also be translated as to be. Let's look at the conjugations for estar. Yo estoy, I am feeling or I am located. For example, estoy bien means I am feeling fine, while estoy en casa means I am located at home. Let's look at the others. Tu estás, you are feeling or you are located. Él está, he is feeling or he is located. Ella está, she is feeling or she is located. Usted está, you formal are feeling or you formal are located. Nosotros estamos, we are feeling or we are located. Ellos, ellas están, they are feeling or they are located. And ustedes están, you all are feeling or you all are located. I find the easiest way for my students to remember when to use this verb is, again, to translate it as to be feeling or to be located. However, there are other memory aids you might find useful. The first is the acronym PLACE. P for position. This is the physical position of someone or something. L for location. This is where someone or something is temporarily or even permanently located. A for action, and that's the ing ending in English. C for condition. This describes physical or emotional conditions like I am feeling tired or she's feeling crazy. And E for emotion. Of course, this describes how someone is feeling at a certain moment. For instance, I'm feeling happy. Since many textbooks like to say that a star is used with temporary conditions, you can also use what I call the 12 hour rule. If it's likely to be the same in 12 hours, so things like height, weight, and personality, use the verb ser. For instance, soy alta, for I am tall. If it's likely to be different in 12 hours, like emotions and locations, use the verb estar. Note that this rule, or, or any rule really, is not 100% effective. For instance, your house will still be where it is 12 hours from now, but you would want to use a star to describe its location. But memory aids can be useful tools. Let's focus on using a star for locations and feelings. The good news is that you've probably been introduced to this already without knowing it. Has your teacher ever greeted you by asking, ¿Cómo estás? That's the verb estar. ¿Cómo estás? translates to, how are you feeling? And you probably answered, bien, for fine. If you had answered with a complete sentence, you would have said, estoy bien. I am feeling fine. And that is also using estar. Let's look at some examples. Susana está enferma. Susana is feeling sick. We used esta because one, it means she's feeling sick. Two, it describes a condition, so the C in the acronym place. And three, she's not likely to still be feeling sick 12 hours from now. It is a temporary condition. Uh, second example, Felipe está cansado. Felipe is feeling tired. Notice the O ending on cansado. If Felipe had been a lady, we would have changed that O to an A, but that's not something you need to worry about right now. Third, el perro está ocupado. The dog is feeling busy. Um, maybe it's a service dog, we don't know. In English, we can replace the word dog with the pronoun it, which falls into the el, ella, usted category when you're conjugating. Uh, the last example, Paco y Felix están contentos. Paco and Felix are happy. Note that we needed to add an S to the word cansado since it's now plural. So that's using a star with emotions. We also use a star for locations. Let's use debajo de for underneath, al lado de for next to, encima de for on top, and delante de for in front of to give us some practice. So if someone asks you, Donde estás? For where are you located? You could answer, Estoy al lado de mi amigo. I'm located next to my friend.
Let's try a couple more. Donde esta el gato? Where is the cat located? Well, like usual, está encima de la computadora. It is located on top of the computer. Donde están sus libros? Where are your books located? Están debajo de mi escritorio. They are located under or underneath my desk. And the last example, ¿Dónde estamos? Where are we located? In English, we would just say, where are we? Estamos delante del restaurante. We are located in front of the restaurant. And that's your turn. Read the sentence and decide what form of a star would go in the blank. Pause the video to give yourself time to figure out the answer if you need to. Start with emotions and finish with locations. Use the emotion words in the box to help you form a complete sentence. For number one, let's answer that the teacher is feeling worried. Did you get la maestra está preocupada for the correct answer? Let's try number two. Answer that the children are feeling sad. Los niños están tristes is the correct answer. Number three, let's answer that we are feeling angry. Did you get estamos enojados for the correct answer? And last one, number four, answer that you are feeling fine. Estoy contento would be the correct answer. Now, if you're a lady and you're doing this, you would want to answer estoy contenta. Have an A at the end of that. Let's move on to practicing with locations, but remember the conjugations are the same. Use the location words in the box to help you form a complete sentence. Okay, let's start with number one. Answer that the cat is under the desk. Did you get el gato está debajo del escritorio? And number two, answer that the restaurant is next to Walmart. Hopefully you got El Restaurante Está Al Lado de Walmart. Number three, let's answer that we are in front of the theater. Did you get Estamos Delante del Cine? And the last one, answer that you are inside the car. And that would be Estoy Adentro Del Carro. Now if you got any of those wrong, you can always go back and play the video again or just the last part and keep practicing. And that's it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please click the like button below. I would appreciate it. Adios.